Hola amigos de Opes Latino, nuevamente eh, en, una, eh, en una sesión muy interesante que por primera vez vamos a hacer completamente en inglés. Hoy tengo el gusto de contar con Luis Fernando Moreno Miquilena, que es un venezolano oriundo de la ciudad de Cumaná, de Estado Sucre, Venezuela. Vive desde hace muchos años en Estados Unidos, en el estado de Minnesota, donde ha llevado a cabo una labor social, una labor de líder comunitario, una labor de líder corporativo comunitario para contribuir con la, migra la inmigración no solamente venezolana, sino latinoamericana en ese estado y en el país. Bienvenido, Luis, a OPEX Latino. Muchas gracias, Gerardo. Encantado de estar aquí en tu programa. Gracias por la invitación. OPEX Latino, talento global competitivo. Plataforma de lanzamiento y estímulo para el desarrollo del talento humano latinoamericano en el mundo. Nuestro objetivo es la identificación y promoción de quienes hacen la diferencia con su talento y contribución de alto impacto. Con valiosos invitados, quienes serán los protagonistas de este espacio especialmente diseñado para la orientación y motivación. Suscríbete a nuestro canal en YouTube, OPES Latino, talento global competitivo. Un espacio conducido por Gerardo Enríquez. Opis Latino, talento global competitivo. Ok, Luis, como hemos prometido, vamos a hacer un switch al, al inglés a partir de este momento y nos despedimos al final también en español, ¿te parece? Claro, gracias. Ok, Luis, I would like to introduce a little bit about Opis Latino, ok? It's the first time, as I mentioned at the beginning, that we are going to uh, broadcast this uh, kind of interviews in English. So, first of all, I would like to introduce uh, uh, Luis, uh, the profile he has. Luis Moreno is a highly energetic business and community leader with a strong passion for education and personal and professional development. Luis is a strong ambassador for education and economic development. He constantly visits schools, colleges, and universities to talk with educators and students about new ideas to improve education. Luis's passion for improving the economy, conditions, and opportunities for professionals has taken him to join leadership roles in employee resources groups and diversity networks. E. coli, General Mills, Lands of Lakes, and General Electric. Luis's efforts have, have translated into very positive outcomes, including the co-creation of the Twin Cities Business Peer Network, which allows students and professionals to connect for professional and per um, personal development, career and business opportunities. And I am very honored to have you, a Venezuelan, a Latin guy, that has been participating very actively during the last years in this territory in the Americas. Thank you. Thanks for the opportunity. <laughs> okay, so Luis, there is a lot to, to talk about you. Um, I had the, not only the honor, but I am feel lucky to, to have been established this contact through one mutual friend of us in Venezuela, yeah. Modesto Vasquez, remember? Yeah. So thank you, Modesto, by the way, yeah. my regards to thank you. Thank you, Modesto. First of all, I would like to introduce a little bit or to remember a little bit about how, uh, what is the approach of Opes Latino uh, mm -hmm. in terms of the talent development? Opes Latino has two special goals. One goal is inspiration, to inspire new talent, the new generations of talent in the Latin uh, environment, to develop their skills, to develop their impact, not only in the places where they born, but around the world. And the second goal is to promote that talent. So let's start with the first one. Um, Luis, uh, how did you discover you have a talent for what you do um, in, in terms of uh, being an, a, a social leader, a social influencer? Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Gerardo. Uh, you know that it was interesting that people would come to me and tell me 
uh, like you know, a, a work, uh, for example, in the 2008 economic downturn, uh, people were you know losing their jobs, uh, and uh, you know people would come to me and I'd say, hey, you know, I'm going to resign, and you know, why are you going to resign? I just you know want to take some time off uh, to be with the family, and I would say, but you know, uh, really, but you know, you're you're not married, you don't have kids. So it was, and then I said, well, you know, if you need any help, I can help you. And yeah, yeah, Luis, please, you know, do help me. And it was, I learned, I realized that a lot of great, uh, very talented people, because of the, you know, as organizations were optimizing, they were uh, ended up outside of a job. And it was really hard for them to be able to ask for help because they didn't know how to be vulnerable. And I found that just by establishing a personal relationship and connecting with people, you know, from the heart and with the understanding that, hey, bad things happen to good people too, it's all right. I don't admire you or I don't respect you because of the title that you have or because you have a job or not, but I rather admire you and respect you and like you because the person that you are, if you're a good person, then I'll be there to help you regardless of whether you have a job or not. And then, so I started to recognize that I had that kind of self spot and, and in fact, I learned that while other people were always so, you know, uh, attracted to like the winners, the champions, the, the, the best of the best, I actually had a soft spot in my heart for the underdog. So when I saw that people were struggling, when I saw that people were just working hard to achieve something, it was taking them longer. I really got activated by that. I really got a, a thrill and excitement. It made me really happy. I got joy just by joining in with people that were trying to go somewhere. There was someone influencing your, your current role or your current model, role modeling uh, that you remember makes you, makes a difference in your life that helped you, helps you to, to, to realize, I am good for this, I can do this. So many people have influenced uh, me in my life. Somebody that has, uh, somebody whose message uh, has really influenced me in my life is uh, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. And one of the things that I liked about him was that he talked about this uh, idea of empathy, which was uh, that he said that, if, you know, an injustice is an, injust an injustice to someone, it's an injustice for all. So basically that, that concept that we can't really live our life only caring about something that is, you know, unfair to us directly or to our direct, you know, uh, relatives, uh, but, all, but we have to care about an injustice that is done to anyone. So when something is not right, it's not okay to be okay with what's not okay. If something is not okay, regardless of who it is not okay for, uh, we need to, to, you know, we need to do something about it. We need to uh, interject. Great, great, great uh, source of inspiration. Let's go to the second, the second question that is going to be, I'm going to start that second question for a, a challenge that I, I have a lot of curiosity to discuss with you. The second question is regarding precisely about challenging. It's very fancy, it's very nice to have some somebody, to see somebody that is influencing, that is a Venezuelan, is a Latin guy and is influencing, not only in the, talent, in the, in the Latin society, but I can observe that you are talking to different kinds of Americas, Americans. So when, when I see that, that, that is very, very nice to me, but I imagine that it's not that easy to develop that kind of influence. And I will wonder how that kind of uh, influence and the, how that kind of impact is born. You arrived how many years ago to, to the United States, uh, Luis? Over 20 years, so in the late 90s, I came in the late 90s. 20 years. Please tell us a, a little bit about uh, how was that entrance, that entry in the, into the United States? Today, we have a lot of Venezuelans migrating to the United States, a lot of Latin people migrating to the United States. And when they arrive, when I arrived here, even when I arrived with a profession, with a company supporting me, etc., I said, well, how I can contribute? Uh, a part of my job, how more I can do for this society? I would like you to talk a little bit about how was that starting in the United States and how that starting takes you 
to what you are doing today. Please. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Gerardo. You are right. It is not easy. <laughs> it has been uh, very difficult and it has taken a long time. I remember, uh, so I'll tell you uh, some of those challenges. The first challenge that uh, was interesting is that, you know, we are uh, more and more in the world. I think our societies are training and conditioning people to be very focused on themselves, uh, very self-centered. So when I started uh, here many years ago and I started my career in my job, I would tell, you know, other colleagues and I say, hey, you know, I want to create this organization to help other people. And people would always tell me, many people would tell me, no, no, no you got to focus on yourself, like forget about the rest of, uh, you know, if you want to do well in your career, if you want to succeed, if you want to get to the top, don't focus on other people, focus on yourself. And I got that message constantly. So uh, that wasn't very encouraging for me for the things that I wanted to do, because what I wanted to do was to help other people succeed. And uh, I found that, you know, people, uh, many people would struggle with that concept because the idea was, you know, like at the, in, the, in the plane, right? Like if you have a mask, put your mask uh, first before you would help other people. And I agree with that, you gotta put your mask uh, first, but then once you have your mask, you have to immediately go and, and help other people get their masks as well. And I think that, uh, so that was the first part, you know, the, the concept again of empathy. But I thought in my heart that, uh, because people tell me, Luis, you gotta focus on being successful. Focus on being successful, you gotta be successful. But uh, what was, and, and we all agree, yeah, if it's like, it's amazing, it's great to be successful. But where we did not agree was what success meant, right? Because I was, I found it hard in my head and in my heart to think of success by me alone. Like if I was just moving up through the, to the top by myself and not helping others in my heart, that was really not uh, a real success. But what I found was that there was a lot of research uh, literature that would say, well, people that are very, very successful, they get to be CEOs, you know, the head of their companies. And yet after they retire, then they go back, you know, to the community saying, hey, you know, here I am, I just finished working now. You know, here I am, uh, open up a space for me on the table. And people were like, no, uh, we kind of, we have our own thing going on here already. Because it's like, yeah, while over the past 30 years, while you were all focused on your job and doing well and getting to be a CEO, we here in the community, we've been planting plants, we've been painting houses, and you know, we have this thing going on, and it's just kind of, it's not as easy for people to now break in and say, yeah, sorry, I took a break for 30 years, but now I am back. So what, I, what that told me is that you, you really should not do that. You should not like dedicate all 30 years only to working and then coming back and then trying to reintegrate into the community, but rather do both at the same time. So in my head was like how to find that balance where I was okay with at work, you know, maybe being a B and a, an A here and there, but kind of more of a, of, an, of a positive average across all of the things that I was involved in. So that when I later in life, when I retire, I won't need to re get reincorporated into the community because I have always been with the community throughout uh, all my life. It's not a place that you gain from one day to the other, correct? Exactly. It's not something that you realize, oh, I already retired, now I am gonna work in the, so in the social environment. No. If I can share something uh, quick here with you. So I have some friends that are recruiters and they are trying to recruit people for boards of you know nonprofit organizations that are doing great work for the communities. And you have resumes of people that have done amazing things. You know, they've gone to Ivy League schools and they have done amazing in their jobs, all of the success, they've grown companies, that they've done everything but they struggle finding a way to see how is this person really going to care for the community. If I read this resume, there isn't really anything about the community in here. So, and, and you have it that, you know, you have boards of uh, very, very smart people that have amazing ideas, but they have not really had the time to, to develop relationships and an understanding of diverse communities. So they can develop solutions that I actually are actually not great solutions, but they these solutions may benefit some communities more than others. So it creates an unbalance. And it, it's not because that person intentionally wants to exclude the others, is that those other people are not in their heads because they haven't spent the time to go out there to spend time with them. There is like a common, common uh, understanding in the, Amer in the Latin American community 
in the United States, and not only in the United States, but it, everywhere where the Latin American community arrives, about the fact that you don't have a worse enemy when you arrive to a country as a Latin American than the other Latin Americans. Uh, when I observe the other different communities, Arabics, uh, uh, Asian people, American, African people, uh, all of them, the Jews, you know, all of them are very united. Yeah. All of them collaborate each other. So I think what we can do to contribute with other, with everybody, but even more with the people that are coming from our roots, you know, uh, is important. And, and I don't know, as, as, as I mentioned at the beginning, I don't know if this is a mind or is a real stop. And the main thing is how, you, how do you think we could be in position to change that? And how have you been doing something to change that? Thank you, Gerardo. Actually, I don't think it's a myth, it's a, it's a reality. And first I'll start by congratula congratulating you for doing this program because this is an example of what we have to do, which is to honor and celebrate and help elevate others. Um, and so, you know, two things. Uh, one of the things is that um, I'll, I always say that from an empathy standpoint, we have to develop, learn to develop the ability to be interested in somebody else's something. So so that our um, our efforts and you know our energy cannot be only to always support ourselves 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 but rather also think about what can i do for others how can i help others especially if those others are of my same community and you are a great example of doing that because this show is the very testament is a testimonial of trying to elevate other people of your own community. So I thank you for that. And the example that I want to share with you is that, you know, uh, we, we buy a lot of clothes and so, uh, or, you know, we buy clothes and then we want to, you know, recycle those and, and uh, donate uh, those clothes, you know. And, and one day I was like thinking to myself, uh, well, you know, these are really nice clothes. Uh, so I should uh, like really go, you know, and, and donate these clothes to a Latino organization then if I want my clothes to go to them because if they look better, I will look better too because I am like them. Obviously, if they, if they have better clothes, they're going to look better. But I also want them to look better by being more educated, by having you know, a better understanding of the world, by being trained, by being you know, developed. So a lot of uh, training and developing that I've done for you know, many uh, community or you know, the Latino community and for many Latinos has actually been as a courtesy. So I've done it for free. So I've spent time and I would go, you know, into just, you know, Latino schools and, and uh, talk with them because if they, if they get inspired and they do better and instead of, you know, doing something bad, you know, going on the street and having a bad idea, if they rather, if I can help to motivate them to actually, you know, enroll in school and college and study and, you know, uh, be uh, citizens of, uh, you know, to do, to do well and to, to do good, uh, then that actually helps us all. So, can you tell me which other challenge you you have been facing to in the road to 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 to, to achieve all this uh, penetration and, and establishment that you already has and as clearly we can observe in the Minnesota state community? Sure, uh, mistrust. Uh, so it's interesting because, like I said earlier, that we're all conditioned to uh, work about ourselves and be focused on ourselves. And what is it about? You know, what's in there for me? For example, when we founded the Twin Cities Business Peer Network, the organization would say, "Hey, you know, we invite you to be part of this organization. We're gonna, you know, do events. I'm gonna help you with." And oh yeah, and how much is the membership? I say, "No, no, no. It's it's uh, it's free." Oh, is it free for the first year? No, 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 is it free? It's free, like it's free, free, it's free, always free, right? Because people, it was hard for people to believe that someone would uh, do something for them without having something in, in exchange, right? And it actually, um, it, so I always, that is something that, uh, you know, worries me or concerns me. When I realize that someone is under that perception that the only way that someone would help somebody else is because they want something in exchange, it worries me because the reality is that there are many people in the world that would do 
a lot for you. Uh, and, and, you know, we have people in the military that are risking their lives every day, men and women of our armed forces for all countries that they literally every day they wake up, they put their boots, their uniforms, and they go out to fight for their countries, even uh, risking their own lives. Uh, and they're doing it because, you know, it's a patriotic, uh, uh, you know, sentiment. So in that same way, there are people who would save somebody else that is drowning, right? So you jump in the water, in the current and, and risk their lives because they want to save somebody else. Uh, and it's real. So it, we have to believe. We, I think, it, you know, for to work against mistrust is we need to believe. You said that basically uh, for you to be trusted, you need to trust the other ones is basically the message, no? Absolutely. And on, on that note, uh, quickly, Gerardo, one of the things that in our trainings that we do is we train people to learn to give. And, but we also say that, you know, uh, generous, generous, generosity is not only about giving, but it's also about learning to receive. Because some people say, oh, you know, I'm a great person. When people come to me and they offer me something, I never take it. I never receive anything from anybody. So I'm very, a very good person. And I always tell people that being a good person is not only about uh, learning to give, but it's also learning to receive because it is in that giving and receiving that you're forming those bones, those those bonds and those relationships. So like when you say, no, 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 sorry, I don't, I don't, you know, I'm not, I don't take that, it's fine. You don't have to do that and stuff. You think you're doing something good because I don't have to spend whatever money I was gonna spend, but actually you're not because you're actually blocking the flow of this, you know, so I'm opening my heart to you. I'm coming, I wanna come closer to you. I wanna relation, I wanna develop a relationship and a bond with you. So then we have to learn also to receive. Well, we are passing then to the third part of the interview, um, which is uh, uh, to describe a little bit how has been your legacy. So I would like to know how, what is what you have to show us in terms of achievement, which uh, from all of those recognitions that you have received, which are the main ones, which are the main achievements you think you you have today to show? And the second question regarding related to that one is what is the next? What is your agenda for the future? What you would like to do, etc. So let's let's talk about that. Achievement, uh, legacy and next goals. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, First, I'll tell you that one recognition that was very meaningful uh, to me was, you know, I've been part for many years of an organization that, uh, you know, used to be called National Society of Hispanic MBAs, Nashimba, which has been renamed to now be uh, Prospanica. And I was very involved uh, with, oh, I've been very involved with that organization more in the past uh, than now. But uh, one day I received a call and they said, hey, you know, Luis, you have been named a member of a year for Nashimba. And when I went to receive the award, they had a very nice, uh, you know, uh, event, a gala ceremony. And uh, I went up, you know, to the stage, got the award. They had uh, some very nice, uh, you know, work. And when I come back to the table, my kids, they, they said, Daddy, Daddy, I want to have it. I want to have the award. And they want to have it in their hands. And they, they wanted to touch it. And they said, uh, oh, you know, Daddy, uh, this is what you do. This is, you know, now it's like, now I understand, you know, those, um, those evening, you know, when you were not uh, with us at the table, having dinner with us, that's where you were, you know, you were out there. So it was very, very nice and very meaningful. And then, you know, I mean, I think that um, for me, it has been just to go out, you know, with a good heart, uh, helping people. And I want to tell you a, a story is that uh, my dad, unfortunately, you know, was uh, diagnosed uh, with cancer and he lived uh, for a long time even after the diagnosis. But uh, eventually at the end of his life, he was living down in Venezuela, in Merida. My dad was a very accomplished uh, man, a very accomplished doctor. And he was always for me, my siblings, 
we worked really hard because we wanted to show to him that, hey, you know, we, we too, like, you know, we want to make you proud. And so when I went there, I wanted to share with him, hey, that, you know, I'm working for this, you know, one of the largest companies in the world, you know, this is a global company. I am managing a business of, you know, it's over a billion dollars. My clients are this, this, this and that. And, you know, so I was just like, wow, you know, you gotta, I want that you to be so, you know, impressed and proud of me right and then uh you know we were like uh, in passing i just commented to him hey that you know that we created this uh organization you know and we just help people to find jobs and we do trainings you know free training for them to get better and to grow as uh, you know professionally and personally and around you know so i told him just like a, a commentary you know right like a comment and uh and then so one of those evenings he had a, a reception where, you know, his colleagues, very successful doctors, you know, were uh, meeting him and he calls me and says, you know, so he says to his friends, oh, you know, I want to introduce you to my son, you know, Luis Fernando. And so he calls me, hey, you know, son, come here. And then he says, you know, to the people, I want to, I'm so proud of my son. Let me tell you what he, he's amazing. Let me tell you what he's been doing. I'm just ready to, for him to tell him that I'm, you know, managing this, you know, billion dollar business for a, for a global company. And then he goes, He's a great person because he's helping other people that are looking for jobs. He and his friends are, you know, reviewing resumes. They're doing mock interviews. They are doing all this professional training. And I think like my heart stopped because I was like, wow, you know, for a person so accomplished uh, in his life, they got to do so many things. They got to the top of his field and he's meeting in the opportunity at the end of his life in sharing with his colleagues that what he chose to talk about and what he what he chose to showcase of his son and how why he was proud of me had nothing to do with whether you know finances a uh, big company brand nothing what was important to him was that i am having a good heart to help my people to help my community to help those around us so it gave me a lesson that happened many years ago and i remember you know Every time I go out, uh, I go with a message that what we do for others is really very important and we have to wonderful, do more. Wonderful message, uh, uh, Luis, and, share, and th thank you for sharing with us this, uh, this great uh, uh, summary of what is a uh, uh, high impact achievement in the social environment. I, I connect with your, your other thought about that because I, I wonder myself if that is will it will be very sad for a professional to being working 30, 35, 40 years in in a company or in the corporate sector without being other things that a successful businessman. Because at the end of the day, when you retire, that businessman is not gonna be remembered by anybody. Probably for the colleagues, the few colleagues that are in touching, the companies normally do not have memory, but the society, they have memory. So that reflection comes up to, to, my, to my mind with you, when you talk about your father, um, save your approach, and, and when I connect that with what you you say uh, in my previous question. And you, you bring up a very important point in that, in what, what do people remember? In our training, when we train on emotional intelligence, and we ask them in terms of, uh, you know, we, we say, think about a leader in your life that has an impact uh, in you. Uh, that is something that you remember, right? So think of a leader that you remember and why. We've done that for years. I am yet to hear somebody that says, I remember when the leader X, Y, and Z double sales or increased sales by 20% or whatever, uh, grew the business or, you know, I don't know, strengthened the finances of the company. Always been about how those people make them better, how they train them, how, you know, they learn something, uh, life lesson. And the stories have been just amazing and beautiful stories that I've heard for over so many years that it never has to do like you were saying it's not about because somebody was great at the financials and the corporation and with a business plan and strategy those are the things that really stay in people's minds uh, because they're personally uh, meaningful and that's what we need to do more of 
That's great. Well, before we go to the next question, I would like to uh, emphasize and remember our followers to register in our channel, Opus Latino, that you can see here in the, in the characters. I invite you to register to contribute to with the, with the, with the project we are developing. So Opus Latino in YouTube, in Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. Opus Latino. So the final question uh, for you, um, Luis, is about next steps. Which are the next projects you are um, carrying out and, and the invitation you can do for others to, to follow your, your projects, your agenda, uh, your events that I know there are a lot. Thank you for your kindness and generosity. Uh, and thank you for following the post and always having a reaction and, you know, uh, liking, uh, sharing, commenting. It's very appreciated. My message, uh, so what? what's next uh, for me is we've been just uh, going out and reaching out to people with the message of, you know, human-centered leadership, uh, emotional intelligence. It's about bringing that humanity into the workplace so that we can uh, really um you know make our workplaces uh more human there if you're having great you know financial results great strategic results how I, you know we're having we're going out to uh share to people share with people some techniques on how you can also impact people in a way that is really connecting on the human side so i have i'm, I'm very um, encouraged and that more and more people are contacting me. So when I, I'll tell you, when I started this work uh, a number of years ago, I had, uh, so it was hard for people to really understand what this work was about. And you know, many people around the world that has a, a fascination and a passion for this work like I do, have had a, a hard time. We have had a hard time to convince uh, people that this is really the way of the future to have a more human uh, world that I'm getting is people that are actually recognizing and are um, even thanking, appreciating and thanking this work because as in, and generationally, the new generation, like the, you know, the, the younger people that are joining the workforce, this is more important for them, which is to, to be able to have a life that is well balanced. And I am convinced that this will happen, that we're gonna get in a place in, uh, in the future where more and more organizations are gonna be interested in hiring leaders and hiring people and bringing people, not only because they talent that they have in terms of technical knowledge that they have about a certain field, but also who are they as people? What kind of heart do they have? How do they treat others? What are, you know, what, what really, what, what's in their hearts in terms of how they want to uh, uh, impact uh, other people? Because the, the better the people that we bring into our, our organization, the better the work environments that we're going to have. And interestingly enough, the better the productivity. Great, Luis. Well, we we have a right to the end of the of the of this uh, conversation. Um, as I mentioned at the beginning, Luis, we are doing today something different that we haven't done in the past, and is uh, developing the interview in English. Let's uh, uh, transmit the, the final message in Spanish for the Spanish community. Um, de manera que vamos a cambiar a español, ¿no? Pero me gustaría que dieras tu, tu mensaje final eh, de esta sesión, que te agradezco mucho eh, haber aceptado participar eh, en español. Bueno, primero quiero empezar con un mensaje para ti, que es para decirte que estás haciendo un gran trabajo, que me encanta lo que estás haciendo, que lo que estás haciendo es eh, buenísimo para la comunidad, para nosotros los latinos, que estamos, y yo soy uno de tus seguidores, y me encanta el trabajo que haces, y es muy lindo ver cómo personas de nuestra comunidad ah, se han en, en for, esforzado y han trabajado duro para poder eh, mejorarse, para crecer profesionalmente y personalmente y dar un aporte a la comunidad. Y me encanta que tú estés ahí para celebrarlos y que lo hagas de corazón y que hayas involucrado a tu familia tan hermosa que está haciendo ese trabajo contigo. Y creo que tiene un impacto increíble. Y para todos tus seguidores, ah, les digo que este, sigan, sigan siempre adelante, no importa los obstáculos que, que tengan, es importante 
que como personas siempre se centren en qué es lo que importa más, qué es lo que importa más para nosotros. Y lo que importa más para nosotros es que seamos personas íntegras, que nos eh, sintamos bien con nosotros mismos y que es importante... Eh, no, es, eh, ser un buen trabajador es importante, eh, ser, si eres un ingeniero, un médico, un abogado, un artista, un albañil, o lo que importa, que no, no importa lo que hagas, eh, eh, lo importante, bueno, primero, obviamente que lo hagas lo mejor que puedas, pero lo más importante que podemos ser, la contribución más significativa que le podemos dar al mundo es ser una buena persona. Y es ser un buen amigo, es un, ser un buen amigo no solamente para los demás amigos y para la gente, sino ser un buen amigo para nuestros propios familiares, para nuestras, eh, para nuestras parejas, para nuestros hijos, eh, para nuestros padres. Eh, hacer lo que podamos para ser una mejor persona, porque mientras, mientras mejores seamos, eh, nuestra contribución para el mundo durante nuestras vidas va a ser mucho, va a tener un impacto mayor y va a ser más significativo. Así que bueno, muchas gracias Gerardo, te quiero mucho, te aprecio mucho y te, te doy las gracias por, por tu amistad. Muchas gracias a ti, Mucha, me, me siento muy honrado de que hayamos podido tener esta conversación y espero que no sea la última ni mucho menos, será una serie de, de invitaciones que haremos y, y siéntete también en libertad de de invitarme o de pedirme cualquier colaboración que podamos hacer desde, desde mi espacio personal y desde el espacio de OPES Latino, que dicho sea de paso, no solamente está involucrada mi, alguna parte de mi familia, sino también un equipo de latinoamericanos muy, muy relevantes que aparecen en los créditos de, 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 esta, de estas sesiones, de estos videos que se ven en, en YouTube. Entonces, para ellos también una una, un reconocimiento y una apreciación de, de, de parte de todos los que formamos OPEX Latino. Muchas gracias y felicitaciones para todos en el equipo. Excelente trabajo, me encanta. Bueno, hasta la vista Luis, un gran abrazo y que sigan tus logros y tus éxitos porque tus éxitos y logros son el impacto que está teniendo hoy en día en la sociedad latinoamericana presente en Estados Unidos, especialmente en Minnesota. A cuidarse mucho a seguir en casa y a, restringir, eh, la, a restringirse a la distancia social que, que tanto eh, es importante mantener en este tiempo. Un abrazo. Gracias, Gerardo. Saludos para todos. Muchas vale, gracias. Chao. Nos vemos pronto. Opes Latino. Talento global competitivo.